from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July 29th. Happy hump day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hear about the big deal between AMC and Universal. This is kind of a big deal and some are calling this a game changer. Absolutely. So AMC theaters and Universal Studios announced today that they have an agreement to shorten the exclusive theatrical window to just 17 days for studio films. You may have heard about it already, but we're going to give you some of the uh, the more details. Uh, the standard window for a theatrical release is typically about 90 days. So with this new deal, after a run of at least three weekends, Universal and its specialty label, Focus Fe Features, will have the option of steering a film to premium on demand, including AMC's own service. Well, the shortened window only applies to premium video on demand, which often means digital rentals of $20, not standard on demand or other home platforms. So why is this a big deal? Well, it's all but certain to lead to other studios to press for similar terms from AMC and other th uh, theater exhibitors. If widely embraced, a three week window would also put further pressure on independent theaters, which tend to rely on longer runs for feature films. AMC exec says that the first three weeks of ticket sales is when a considerable majority of a movie's theatrical box office revenue mm -hmm. typically is generated. And this is interesting considering that AMC and Universal had a huge falling out over the release of Trolls during the pandemic. So not only have they started talking again, they've come up with this game changing deal. Terms of it weren't disclosed, but AMC will get a share of the premium video on demand revenue. So some of those upcoming films, F9 and, oh, I just realized I'm dressed like a minion today. <laughs> Why do you Mini say that? I, what, what? Why do you say that? Minions? Why you're dressed like you? Did you say I'm dressed like a I'm, minion? I'm dressed like a minion because Minions is coming out, but that's not why I dressed. I, okay. I just realized as I was saying, I was like, and I look like one, right? <laughs> but that's one of the big movies coming out. I don't think you look like. A oh, minion. thank you, Mark. <laughs> Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. death toll about to surpass 150,000. President Trump falsely claimed last night that much of the country is free of the virus. He also once again defended the drug hydroxychloroquine. There's a lot of unknowns as students return to school this year. We don't know the full impact. We don't have the total database of knowing what there is to expect. Prosecutors say Hines received nearly $4 million in loans from the government's Paycheck Protection Program, allegedly claimed to be the head of four companies, and then used the money on dating websites, jewelry, clothes, and the $300,000 sports car. Hines is now at his home wearing an ankle monitor. Near Houston, a small plane crashed in front of a Harris County home. According to the DPS, the plane lost power while lying 7,000 feet in the air. The pilot and another passenger on board were taken to the hospital for injuries, but no other injuries were reported. The demand for aluminum cans has increased due to more people drinking at home from the pandemic, and some San Antonio breweries are feeling the impact. The problem is demand exceeding supply. JetBlue is testing the device designed to disinfect planes with a powerful dose of ultraviolet light. It's made by Honeywell, which says it can disinfect a passenger cabin in less than 10 minutes. Starbucks famous pumpkin spice latte is coming back. The chain announced the drink will return sometime this year, but didn't give a specific date. Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are returning to the studio. Podiums for Jeopardy contestants will now be socially distanced. Wheel of Fortune will reportedly feature a redesigned wheel to make sure contestants are properly separated. Mattel, the company that sells Barbie, unveiled a new 2020 campaign line of dolls. One is a candidate, another is a campaign manager, a fundraiser, and a voter. New Crocs inspired by KFC the $60 shoes, which include a chicken scented charm. 31 minutes later, they were sold oh. out. Of course they were that sold out. kind of stuff always sells out. I have a prediction about the pumpkin spice latte thing. Tell me. So I predicted it was possible that the Disney might release Hamilton early during the pandemic mm -hmm. for wide audiences and great appeal. And what that, that happened. Pumpkin Spice Latte, last year they came out, I think we reported late August. Late August. They're going to announce they're going to do it any day now. It's going to be early. They're going to roll it out earlier than they ever have before to make us all happy. You know what? I'm a big PSL fan. Mm -hmm. um, I had to cut back because I realized the calorie count is mm -hmm. much higher. Mm -hmm. But when you... You realize that doesn't work. You're on TV, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just, <you're> uh, <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they, know, they know my secrets. Right. Um, but when you drink them, it makes it feel like it kind of is colder outside. You know, Justin, it... It, even though it's 
hot. For a lot of folks, it's a positive psychological effect. Oh, wow. I don't understand that. Have you had <laughs> It's not good at all. What, uh, you don't want it. You, you don't want the pumpkin spice out this early. I I just can't stand it. Right. But I Katie think Blake is a big pumpkin spice fan. Oh, Katie Blake is like off the charts. PSL all the way. Uh, it does sort of put you in the fall mood, I suppose. Uh, but <laughs> these temperatures certainly do not. Uh, 97, our high temperature today predicted at least. 94 Kerrville, 96 in Hondo, 96 in Katua. Another hot day. We got up to 99 yesterday. We've put together a pretty nice streak here of some really hot temperatures. And in fact, I think we'll get some triple digits starting tomorrow and Friday. But here's a glimmer of good news. Uh, I do think that we'll get uh, some rain chances on Saturday. And they're looking a little bit better as we continue to look at the computer models. This is uh, not what we want to see, but that's not the correct pollen count, actually. Mold jumped up to 21,600 today, very high category. We'll have that correct number for you in just a bit, but heads up for people who suffer from mold, not a good situation. 72 Bernie State, 78 at the airport, 82 New Braunfels, 79 right now in Pleasanton. We do have some morning clouds, they'll go away. 98, your high temperature, 20% chance of rain. And then we'll talk more about those weekend rain chances. Plus, we uh, have some more development in the, uh, in the Caribbean. We'll have more on that here in just a bit too, guys. Thank you, Justin. If you have to be out and about, we hope you aren't. We hope you're right here watching us through the duration of the hour. But if you are headed out to run some errands or head to work, 35 upper and lower level at Brooklyn looks fantastic. So does I-35 at Alamo. Some top stories we're following this morning. Bear County saw the number of COVID-19 cases shoot up yesterday with health officials reporting more than 1,500 new infections. But Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the total does not necessarily represent a 24-hour period. He says the increase could show new cases from the past week. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf explained why all of this could be happening. The federal government never took control of testing, never took control of the labs. They allowed a free enterprise system to just suck up supplies. Everybody competed with each other. So that resulted in this six to seven day delay. So when we hear, see a number like that, we're really looking a little bit into the past, we don't, but we don't know precisely how far back in the past. The mayor says starting today, he will give a daily update on the seven day rolling average, which he says will provide a more reliable way to track cases in our community. Certainly an interesting development. Well, across the country, new COVID cases going down, but deaths are surging. That's according to an internal FEMA memo obtained by ABC News. The memo states that in the past week, new cases nationwide have decreased 0.6%, but deaths have gone up significantly with 30.1%. 1% more deaths than the week prior. Uh, two other news this morning. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, making a stop at the Lone Star State today. He's scheduled to visit the Permian Basin for a campaign fundraiser in Odessa. First, he will tour an oil rig at Double Eagle Energy and give a speech to members of the energy industry in Midland. Then he will head to Odessa, where he's expected to raise up to $100,000 a person at a round table with supporters. The Texas visit comes as the president works to secure the potential battleground state's votes. Recent polls show Joe Biden pulling ahead of him in the presidential race. Back here at home, the pandemic is creating more issues in our community, including unemployment and domestic violence. And there's potential these issues could increase child abuse and neglect. That's why our KSAT community partners and the Children's Shelter are teaming up for a child abuse awareness town hall today. We'll have a panel of experts answering questions about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. Again, it airs today from 2 to 3. You can watch it online, ksat.com, or wherever you stream with the KSAT TV app. In your morning headlines, this is a morning of hero police officers saving babies and bystanders saving drivers. We also have proof you're never too old to learn new technology, even if you're a queen. David Sears is here. We've got some video today that it'll get your heart pumping. You, you'll be like on the edge of your seat. We're ready. Stuff. So ready. Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's start in Pensacola, Florida. That is a three year old you're about to see right next to a pool. They're working on her. She was found floating in the grandparents pool. Look how blue her little hands are. So you know this is a desperate situation. When police arrived, she was not breathing, didn't have a pulse. They first try to make sure her airways are cleared. They eventually turn her over and start CPR. After a few minutes, she was finally able to take a breath. For me, when I saw her take that breath, uh, I really, <clears throat> I really just thought it was a miracle. 
when we arrived on scene, I didn't expect her to recover. The good news, little girl taken to the hospital and has made a full recovery. Oh, but we're just getting started. Strangers now have a lifelong connection after a man in that group hugging these two ladies. They saved a member of their family. This was the scene after a car crash, a vehicle on fire, flames coming out of the hood. Antonio Morgan didn't waste any time trying to get the driver out of the car. He was having to fight a seatbelt, as you saw there. A little explosion happened, more smoke and flames. Finally, Antonio was able to get the driver's seatbelt undone and then was able to pull him through the driver's side to get him out of that car. Another passerby able to knock down the flames with the fire extinguisher. This all happening in Missouri. Colleen Robinson's mom and aunt saw the video about 15 minutes later, and then they met the hero a couple of hours after that. If he would have not been persistent with that and not stuck on that, my son would be dead right now and I would be planning a funeral. My guardian angel saved my baby. <laughs> this man, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Just incredible rescue video. The two ladies say Antonio is now a member of the family. Oh, and we're not done. More heroes. This time a man suffered a medical episode and ended up crashing his vehicle into a pole. This happening in New Jersey. You can see the vehicle back there. You can see all the smoke coming out of that vehicle. A couple of passerbys able to help police and eventually pull the driver out and then they get the man to safety. Then the vehicle catches fire. You saw all those flames right there. So timing on this rescue was everything. Just happened to be the right person in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. I don't use the word lucky. I just said thank God that um, at this point he allowed us to be where we were and nobody got hurt. Yeah, the driver taken to the hospital in stable condition. All right, let's end on a good note. Finally this morning, you're never too old to learn how to use modern technology. The Queen of England getting on Zoom. She got help from Princess Anne, so the princess is 70, teaching the 94-year-old queen how it all works. This actually happened back in June. There were six people on the call. Four of the callers were carers. They were folks who were taking care of family members during the coronavirus, so they were getting there and talking to the queen about how they were having to deal with the situation with coronavirus and their family members. Well, uh, the but queen could do it. Yeah. Anyone. Oh, don't, 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 don't start. I mean, I see Justin over there smiling and he's like, uh-huh, yeah. I know, I know oh, it's coming. So. I, don't, I don't know where we're going with that. Yeah, I, do, oh. I do. Justin <laughs> likes old folk jokes. Oh. Aimed at, at who? Me. Well, he throws them at me. Um, Spurs? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, their final exhibition game. Got they one out of the good. three. So we'll talk about that and set you up for Friday night's opener coming up. All right, talking Spurs, Pacers, and looking ahead. Thank you very much, Thank David. You. Hey, real quick, breaking news. You want a snapshot of how the economies have affected? General Motors just reported an $806 million loss in the second quarter. That's a 47% drop in revenue. Wow. Unbelievable. 910 right now, 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A couple in California has set up a bunch of figurines from the movie Toy Story on the roof how they hope this will be, bring joy to their neighbors. Are you ready? Get ready for another edition of Katie Science Lab. Today, Katie Blake is showing us how to make a lava lamp. That's coming up later in this newscast. And a facility that was used to shoot some hoops is now going to be used to help people get back to work here in the Alamo City. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. I'll explain right after the break. Welcome back. It's 914. During this pandemic, we have all, we are also facing an economic crisis and a lot of people in and around the country and our community have lost their job. My fault. I tried to make her laugh. Uh, now to Port San Antonio. They're stepping up, helping out. Max Massey joins us live from Port SA. Max, why are you in a gym again? Again. <laughs> Always finds its way to a basketball court. I mean, court. pickleball, now this. What's going on, Max Massey? <laughs> Well, guys, this is a gym now, but in a few weeks, it's going to be a classroom to help people get back to work. I'm joined here, CEO and president of Port San Antonio, Jim Perschbach. So, Jim, right off the bat, what is the plan going forward? The plan going forward is to take this facility and turn it into an education and training facility for two groups of people. One, people who don't have access to broadband or computers at home, they can come in here and have access to it. And two, people who really want to find opportunities with the types of employers we have throughout San Antonio, but particularly here at Port San Antonio. Advanced technology, cybersecurity, robotics, and aviation. We are in a basketball court right now, but the plan is much larger than that. A 27,000 square foot facility, so take us through it. Yeah, so what you've got, the basketball court here that you can see, 
But the old cardio rooms, the boxing gyms, the racquetball courts can all be converted into laboratories, into training environments, and that's the plan. We've been working on this for the past couple weeks, along with the folks from SAMSAT, Workforce Solutions Alamo City, Project Quest, and uh, SAEDF. And we hope to have this building up and running in just the next couple of weeks. And we talked to Workforce Solutions earlier today. They talked about the hospitality jobs. But you guys are working to get these people who come and learn here ready for 21st century jobs in technology. That's exactly right. You know, there are hundreds of jobs available on this campus right now with some of the best employers anywhere in the country. And there are hundreds of jobs, thousands of jobs available throughout San Antonio. We've got a bunch of great people in San Antonio with just a little bit of training, just a little bit of upskilling on their resume. Well, by golly, we're going to get a 21st century workforce that's even better than the workforce we have today. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Thank you. And Mark, Sarah, the plan is to have this up and running by September. Guys? Max, uh, Justin Horn wants to know how you can make those awesome shots under pressure and not make free throws on a regular basis. Important <laughs> questions. Ask Justin if he's ever beaten me in basketball, and then we can talk. Justin, man. have you ever beaten Max at basketball? Uh, I don't recall. Okay. Is, that, is that a fair answer? I conveniently forgot that answer, didn't All right. you, Max Massey? <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Max. <laughs> he's a good sport, more than one way. Love sports. Love sports. Justin, what's the latest over there? Ooh, uh, well, we're going to jump at the junior meteorologist now, and uh, we've got what a six-year-old from Lytle. Mm-hmm. Esmeralda. She's a little thing, but she's got a, a helper who's very large. You'll see what I'm talking about. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Esmeralda Ornelas in Vidal, Texas. It's very sunny and windy today. I hope it rains for, for my grandpa pool. Bye. Oh, for, <laughs> bye. <laughs> she hope it rains for her grandpa's bull. I, I hope so, too. And the bull's like, uh, yeah, I've got, I, I, I could, love the I bull. This. The bull is just being so sweet and mm -hmm. gentle. Yeah. Just chill. I love it. Esmeralda, thank you very much. We'll jump into the forecast and see if we can get some rain going. First off, though, this is what I wanted to show you earlier. Uh, mold, 21,600. It jumped up big time today. Uh, so if you have uh, allergy issues, this could be why pigweed is low at 40. Here's a look at the satellite picture. We've got some morning clouds out there, a little thicker than yesterday, so they're going to last a little bit longer, but I still think temperatures will be right about where we were yesterday. You see some of the, uh, the cloud deck up there around Bandera and Blanco, and then we're seeing some here in San Antonio as well. Any sort of rain is well off to our north, so places like Oklahoma City, Dallas, you're checking in with some showers and storms this morning. And uh, there may be a little bit more rain there this afternoon. I want to show you water vapor real quick. Notice we've got a swirl in the atmosphere right here. So there's a weak upper level low. It's moving away, but we're on the right side of it now. So I still think we could get some isolated showers and storms today. It's not going to be widespread. Still about a 20% chance of rain. That's it. Uh, radar right now shows us a couple showers right along the coast. Uh, these are not moving very much, but uh, producing some lightning down there around Victoria. I want to show you the aquifer real quick, too. We're at 656.2, uh, so we're starting to go back down. We've held pretty steady right in, that, uh, right in between Stage 1 and Stage 2 last week or so, but the 10-day uh, average is 655.1. Uh, meantime, let's talk about the tropics. Uh, we've got a developing system down here. They're still calling this potential tropical cyclone number 9. But we believe that this will become ECIS. Oh my gosh. ECIS. E e e e e Nailed it. You almost so sure I was going to get it this time. You, uh, anyway. Practice. Practice that. You're, you're I, so I, close. I, I practiced it like 100 times. Okay. Uh, there's the showers and storms associated with it. It's looking a little bit better just at this last uh, satellite view here. Uh, but this is going to move off to the north and west, and it will affect. Uh, Dominican Republic, we think that'll happen by Thursday, and then eventually it'll move up towards Florida, potentially as a tropical storm. And right now, the, the shift has been a little bit to the west as far as the track is concerned. So places like Tampa and still Miami need to keep an eye out for this uh, potential tropical cyclone, but we do think it'll be a tropical storm uh, a little bit later today. It's looking uh, better and better. Outside right now, 80 degrees. Dew point is at 70. Heat index is at 83. 77 Boulevard, 83 right now in New Braunfels, 76 Stinson, 77 in Divine, 79 right now in Del Rio, so we're off to a warm start. And the high temperatures today up around 98 here in San Antonio, but look at the heat index, up around 104, 105, maybe potentially 106. There's enough humidity out there for that, so uh, it will feel a lot warmer than the air temperature. As far as rainfall is concerned, I do think we'll get some isolated showers and storms. 
Tomorrow, though, dries out some. I think that'll be the case Friday, too. And then we'll be watching this weak frontal boundary uh, by Saturday. Won't make it in here, but it'll get close enough to produce some isolated showers and storms. And I think our best chance is probably Saturday afternoon. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Right now we have a 30% chance of rain in the forecast for Saturday. 98 today, 20% chance of rain. Uh, 100 tomorrow, 101 Friday. And then 97 Saturday, 30% chance. 20% chance on Sunday, 98. And I'm going to keep practicing. I promise. Okay. Isai. Isai. Yes. Yes. See, I can say it now. It's Spanish and Portuguese, and it's biblical. It means, it literally translates, don't, this is what Google's telling me. Uh -huh. Okay. God is my salvation of Spanish origin. So, holy moly, get it right, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Isai Eas. Isaias. All right. He's going to have <laughs> it by tomorrow. He's going to do it, we promise. Will. Tomorrow or, yes. or maybe Friday. He's going to write the lines. That's okay. 921 right now, 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A family in California wanted to do something special to cheer up their neighbors, so they recruited some of Disney's most beloved characters. You're not going to want to miss this story. That's next. 925, welcome back. A California couple is going to infinity and beyond in order to bring joy to their neighbors. They set up Toy Story dolls to reenact scenes from the films on the rooftop. Vanessa Paz with KGTV in San Diego has the details. If Toy Story were real, it might look something like this. I thought a few people would notice. Uh-uh. They come by constantly. It all started when couple Stephen and Sue Stewart wanted to bring joy and smiles to their neighborhood amid COVID-19 while working from home. You saw something on the internet similar. He ordered all of them, and then we had to figure out how are we going to get them up on the roof. Little did they know that small investment would equal something big. Like I went to get the mail, and these people go, that is the best thing ever. And I'm like, you have no idea what an impact He's making people smile. The couple even leaves chalk out so neighbors can write fun messages like this one that says save Woody. And Sue said it's not just the kids who are the audience. There's couples, there's adults, there's two ladies who walk every single day and they check it out every single day. Every other week is a different scene and sometimes someone new. We got the aliens, so we added them one time. And then we, we moved the positioning of Buzz and Woody, and then we got Bo Peep in. They moved the figure safely using fish line. Sue said they chose Toy Story because of its message that we are all in this together. ABC 10 News, Vanessa Paz. Well, it's 926 and 80 degrees, and there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. It's true. Go Spurs go. Silver and Black finish their scrimmages with a win over the Pacers. David and RJ join us with highlights and a look at what's up next for our Spurs. And it's Wednesday, so it's time for Katie's Science Lab. We are making your very own, this is really coming together nicely, this look here. We are making your very own lava lamp without high electricity bills, no danger of it overheating, anything like that. That is coming up next on GMSA at 9. Well, just because the kids are out of school doesn't, for summer doesn't mean that the learning has to stop and today Katie Blake is teaching us about science. She <laughs> joined us here in the studio for another edition of Katie's Science Lab and you've upped your game as far as matching your emoji there. Yeah. <laughs> Got the glove, she's official. It looks awesome. Amazon is a beautiful thing. However, for this, I know these gloves are a little big. Little um, there was only one size available, so I think we're gonna have to, because I can't, I've got Com the food coloring. See? Completely understand. <sighs> Take them off. Mm -hmm. Take them off. Let's okay. Take. Oh, there, there there's the sound effect. Um, <laughs> alrighty, so today this is going to be really fun. We're taking it, we're taking it back to a, a groovy time. I'm going to show you today how to make your very own lava lamp. I was really excited about this because my mom ne never let me have a lava lamp what? when I was a kid. She always said it, they were dangerous. That's just me. My mom I... called them tacky, but I got one. <laughs> I'm jealous. I never got one. So, yes, we okay. And the cool thing about this is you can make a big lava lamp or a smaller version. So what you're going to need is a clear bottle of some kind. You're going to want to fill it up with water about a quarter of the way full. So not all the way, about a quarter of the way full. You will need some vegetable oil, some Alka-Seltzer and food coloring. A lot of this stuff you may already have at home. I had to go get the Alka-Seltzer because it's not cold season, but 
All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna show you the smaller one because I think it would take almost all the vegetable oil to fill, fill up this big guy. But keep in mind, you can do whatever size you would like. So we've got our bottle of water filled about a quarter of the way full, and then we're going to add in the vegetable oil. And you'll wanna kind of fill up the rest of the bottle with the vegetable oil. So way more oil than water. And the kiddos may be tempted to kind of start to shake the bottle. Uh, but don't do that because you want the water and the oil to stay separated mm -hmm. as much as possible. Doing That's going to help too. That is the wrong cap. We, we, we would have already spilled it by now. <laughs> oh, it was a disaster. That was beautiful. That's, that's I, why I'd I had let to, mom do it. That's why I had to take the gloves off. Yeah, so we've got good separation here. So again, try to keep the kiddos from mixing it up because then you'll have to wait for things to separate out again before adding in the food coloring. So what color should we do, guys? you have a preference? Uh, we lean towards red. Yeah, red? Red. Yeah. Good choice. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to put, you can put a generous amount of food coloring in there. So let the kiddos kind of put a few, a few drops in. Now nothing's gonna happen right away. The food coloring is gonna go down to the bottom and then this is where the Alka-Seltzer comes in handy. I knew I should have opened this beforehand. I really hope this is not like <laughs> one of the lava or the volcano. This isn't like Diet Coke and Mentos, is it? <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. okay. Got the goggles on. So break the Alka-Seltzer tablet okay. up a little bit. Plop, plop. So you wanna put a smaller kind of chunk of it fizz, in there. Ready? Fizz, fizz. Let's do it. There it go. look at it. Yep. Oh, Ooh la la. Mm -hmm. Science. It's that happening. Is so re it's relaxing. It's happening. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> look at that. There it goes. It hey oh. Yeah, look at that. There you go. So that's it. cool. Well, yeah, that's it. But so, so you can put more ever, in there. How long does it's. It'll, it'll go for about a few minutes, and then if you want to add more of the Alka-Seltzer, that's why it's kind of a good idea to break it up. You mm -hmm. can drop more of the Alka-Seltzer in there as it starts to slow down. So Sarah asked if I was going to explain <laughs> why this was happening. I guess I will. So the of course, the oil and the water stay separated, but the Alka-Seltzer helps to kind of fizz up the water a bit there, make it kind of carbonated, and so that pushes all that food coloring from the bottom up into the oil, but you don't get a total mixture because the water and the oil uh, still want to stay separated so there you go and again like I said you could do this a big a big version here I may have to do that when I get home and then uh, put some pictures on social media but this is cool you could add different colors do however many colors you want and yeah this will go for a few minutes and then you can use the rest of the alka seltzer keep it fizzy that one really worked Katie I like Blake, that you finally we got your lava lamp that you never got <laughs> no take that bomb <laughs> <laughs> yeah mom <laughs> so yeah I hope you guys like this you can uh, if you want to do this later mm -hmm. uh, Everything's gonna be online, ksat.com. Just go to the KSAT Kids section. And keep in mind, if you wanna join us live in real time next week, we're gonna let you know on GMSA, I believe in the six o'clock hour, right, what you're going to need if you wanna follow along with us next Wednesday for okay. Katie's Science Lab. So it's tie-dye milk and now Katie's lava lamp. Lava lamp. Okay, very cool. Gotta put and the gloves back on. Now. Great thing about it, these are super easy to do and they don't really make a mess or anything. There you go. Well, Katie doesn't make a mess. Mm -hmm. If we were trying to do this, forget about it. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> she has no further comment. <laughs> like that is so accurate. Uh, that, uh, that's a great job, by the way, Katie. I love that. I uh, love that experiment. Look forward to some some more coming up. Thank you. I'll try them out. Look. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at the pollen count. I think this is worth mentioning again uh, because mold is just skyrocketed today. It's at 21,600. If you're waking up with a stuffy nose, uh, this could be the culprit. So just a heads up. Hopefully it comes down tomorrow. We're looking at the live radar right now, we've got some showers right along the coast. Some lightning strikes showing up south of Victoria. These showers and storms will continue to work north, but very, very slowly. And I think the radar will look similar to yesterday, where anything we see is going to be few and far between, but a, a lucky few may get some showers today. We've been watching that morning cloud deck. It's lifting north. We're starting to see some breaks here in Bear County. Some of those thicker clouds are now up towards Tarpley and Bandera with temperatures there in the 70s. We'll be up around 98 degrees today. 20% chance rain heat index will jump over 100 this afternoon. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, let's take a look at Transguide 4. 10 and crossroads it looks like there might be a rollover accident right now and firefighters are out there with first responders diverting traffic down to two lanes if you're headed that way just 
make sure you take note that you're going to be in traffic for a while. And, and there's some of the backups uh, caused by that incident. It looks like this could be in the eastbound lanes of 410. So there's lane coming at you uh, headed towards uh, San Pedro and uh, I-35 again eastbound 410 across roads. Now, hours away from the long awaited restart of the NBA season. Spurs took care of Biz in their final scrimmage, and now we look ahead to their opener against the Sacramento Kings on Friday. David is back with us in studio. RJ Marquez joins us home with a preview of what's to come. Good morning, guys. Mark, morning. Mark, 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 Mark. Remember the other day I threw out a number? <laughs> yes. So I'm going to throw out another number, 12. 12. What, so, is, what does that number go to you? I'm going to th say that is the number of turnovers that it dropped. What did I tell you the other day? Turnovers. They need to cut them in half. They had 24. Mm -hmm. They need to cut them down to 12, and they'll be fine. And you were right. Coach Sears over here. I'm telling it's a you. <laughs> Sounds like pop. Come on. I wouldn't know how to coach a basketball game. Just roll it out there and let them play. That's what. That's my theory. <laughs> so. Yeah, guys. Um, well, like David said, I mean, obviously you cut down on the turnovers and it equals out to a win. Obviously, look, the, the guys that are starting now – getting a lot more used to playing with one another. Uh, yesterday, Coach Will Hardy stepped in for Pop as they do kind of the, the rotation amongst the assistant coaches. Now, Pop should be on the bench for Friday's game, but uh, like David said, I mean, obviously, less turnovers leads to more possessions, and that equaled a win for the Spurs yesterday. And, you, you know, the other thing, RJ, for the third game in a row, that's the same starting lineup, the three young guys, DeJounte, Derek White, and Lonnie Walker the fourth, all on the floor to start the game. So you got to figure if they're going those three games, that could very well be the starting lineup when they take on Sacramento on uh, on Friday night. So it'd be very interesting. No more Pat, no no Patty Mills last night. Yeah, I saw that. And Demar no played Forbes minutes. last night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but we did see Demar. Are, are we surprised right. that Patty didn't get any minutes during no. these three scrimmage games? Not at all. Not no, enough. no. So so prior to the game, Pop said that uh, part of the reason that they were sitting Patty out for these scrimmage games is because he's got kind of a Manu Ginobili makeup. He's such a high energy guy that they basically wanted to save him for uh, the seeding games, as the NBA is calling them. Also interesting to note, no Bryn Forbes yesterday. I think that is definitely more of a coach's decision as Lonnie Walker gets more minutes. And of course, some of the other guys, Derek White, Keldon Johnson looked great also yesterday off the bench. El Contusion Jr. is what I think they're calling uh, calling Patty Mills. That's now. pretty good. You know, he does end up on the floor a lot. Kind of reminds you a little bit of Tony Parker. Goes down the lane and lays, lays it in and then falls on the floor. So they got to save the guy. You got eight games. If you're going to make a going to make a run, you got to start off fast. That means you got to have a win on uh, on Friday. What do we figure? They got to go at least seven and one to make up four games against the Memphis Grizzlies. Well, that and was, they have to beat Memphis the second game. That yeah. was my next question. How do they face? Uh, how do they match up against the Kings? And looking ahead to the eight, I do. I yeah. hate putting people on the spot, but I'm going to put both of you on the spot here. Predictions go go on on this on this record coming up in these final eight games. You want my well, honest prediction or just, yes. just, just <laughs> no yes. lie to me? What they have to Give do, to I think they can't go any worse than seven and one if they're okay. going to make the playoffs. I don't yeah. see them going seven and one. Maybe six and two at best, or five and three. But I think if they're yeah. going to make the playoffs, they got to go seven and one. They got a chance I at it. They, but. I think they have to go six and two at minimum, six and two, and. The thing is, is that they should be able to beat Sacramento to start with, and then they get Memphis Sunday afternoon and then Philadelphia Monday. So we're going to know right away whether the Spurs are going to be in contention for the playoffs. But an interesting thing to know is that, you know, a lot of people have been calling for the youth movement, the young guys. Guess what? There's going to be a lot of growing pains that come along yeah. with this. So be patient. I think this is a good lineup. I think this is the best lineup the Spurs have moving forward. But it is going to be a challenge. A lot of good teams are at the NBA bubble. And that and that's the that's the problem with starting these three young guys. You're talking growing pains, just like just like RJ said. So it it, it could be painful as we, as we go through this if that's what they're going to start. It's a lot it's, of pressure though. 22 years is. straight of yeah. making the playoffs. I was going to say it's a little tough to be patient when you're a Spurs fan. Yeah, well, yeah. you know that is true. Spurs fans uh, have never been uh, too patient when it comes to, <laughs> but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. They expect, uh, you know, they expect greatness from this franchise, and we'll see how these young guys kind of yeah. step up to the pressure. All right, Spurs Kings Friday night, seven o'clock, San Antonio time. Guys, we're out of time. Thank you, David and RJ.
And here is that sure. matchup. I think we're going to roll that animation real quick. No, maybe not. Nope. 941, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Welcome back about 945. Justin, I saw, hi. <laughs> hi. How you doing? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Justin, I see some, a little bit of rain behind you, but yep. I mean, that's nowhere really near us, right? It's not. It's, it's along the coast and it's not near enough. Uh, we need a, a really good soaking here in South Texas. And I don't think that's really in the forecast, but I am a little more encouraged about Saturday because we're going to get a weak frontal boundary down here and that may kick off a little more shower activity than we've seen as of late. We'll keep our fingers crossed, but in the meantime, you're right. The radar, uh, any shower activity is way down there along the coast. Uh, Victoria over to Lake Jackson. You got some uh, thunder and lightning mixed in there, uh, but that is not moving in our direction at the moment. In fact, it's just drifting north. I do think that we'll start to see some maybe more development in this area a little bit later this afternoon, uh, much like yesterday. Okay, uh, we're going to jump into the tropics now and our developing system here, Isaias. Yeah, I think you got it. Uh, that is uh, moving off to the north and west. It looks a little bit better. We're starting to see some good development now, some thunderstorm activity right around what would be a center of circulation there. Uh, and this is starting to bring some pretty heavy rains, places like Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands. That certainly will be the case the next couple of days. There could be some flooding rains there as this thing develops a little bit further. Right now, winds are at 45 miles per hour. And the latest track takes it right over the Dominican Republic. Now, when that happens, there are some pretty mountainous areas there. This could sort of shred it apart a little bit, but uh, still the Hurricane Center thinks this will stay a tropical storm as it moves towards Florida. So if you have uh, vacation plans to Florida, maybe uh, this weekend and early next week, uh, you'll want to be uh, looking ahead because this could produce some pretty heavy rain there as well. Uh, especially if it makes it out into the uh, to the Gulf, but it is not expected to affect us at all here in South Texas. Uh, visible satellite picture shows we do have some cloud cover across Bear County, a little thicker band of clouds, Bandera up to Blanco. These will dissipate pretty quick. We're going to see a lot of sun today and it's going to be hot for sure up in the upper 90s. Again, uh, a lot of showers and storms from Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls down to uh, Dallas. That's where that rain will stay. We don't expect that that will move south. But uh, again, we will be watching for a weak frontal boundary this weekend that may push some showers and storms south. We we're also noticing on water vapor, we've got a little bit of a circulation here, some deeper moisture trying to push north. And I do want to keep an eye on that. I think we could see some showers, especially across our southern counties today. So here's what our future cast looks like. It does show some of that rain. Uh, tracking north and so by six o'clock some isolated showers and storms and uh, maybe some better downpours as you get out towards Victoria and Gonzales. Now let's go forward in time Thursday and Friday. Not a big deal. I think it's just hot. I don't think we'll see much rain, but here comes that frontal boundary I was talking about. This is five o'clock on Friday. It will not make it down into our area, so it's not going to cool us down, but it just gets close enough to spark off some showers and storms and hopefully those would uh, push south and we could get some decent development Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. Uh, that's the plan right now anyway. Uh, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. We've got that morning cloud deck that's been moving through. This is the time lapse and we're seeing more and more sun uh, just within the last uh, 30 minutes or so. 80 degrees dew point is at 70. Temperatures generally in the 70s and 80s at this hour. 83 Kennedy, 83 Gonzalez and then uh, humidity is fairly thick. Dew points in the 70s. And those numbers don't come down much this afternoon, so there will be a heat, heat index most of the day. Already feels like 90 in Pleasanton, feels like 83 here in San Antonio, and I think the heat index will jump up to about 100 today. 20% chance of rain, 20% uh, well, it goes away tomorrow, 100 on Thursday, 101 Friday, but back uh, rain chances come back Saturday, 30% chance of rain, and some more slight chances Sunday into Monday. We'll be right back. More than 1,500 new COVID-19 cases were added in Bear County for a total nearing 38,000. If those numbers seem high, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says that's because the cases reported daily don't necessarily reflect a 24-hour period of infection. These new cases are from over a period of from about a week. Moderna's vaccine test is showing promise. Seven of eight primates injected with the vaccine showed no detectable virus in their lungs just two days after exposure. It is very credible that we could have um, tens, the high tens of millions of doses of FDA authorized or approved vaccine uh, this year. 
Frustration coming from local leaders after the Texas Education Agency updated its guidance saying it will not fund school districts that keep classrooms closed because of a local health mandate. Now districts that want to continue with distance learning past four weeks must get TEA approval. This morning, the chief executives for the world's biggest tech companies preparing to appear on Capitol Hill for a historic antitrust hearing. They're expected to face questions over whether the size of their companies stifle competition. Human remains found on the south side of the county. The sheriff's office saying the body was so decomposed they can't determine an age or a gender at the moment. The discovery was made by a man walking his dog. President Donald Trump will be in West Texas today. He'll be visiting Double Eagle Energy in Midland. The president will also raise money for the Republican Party and his re-election campaign at a fundraising luncheon in nearby Odessa. Presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden says he will choose his running mate next week. I'm gonna have a, a choice in the first week in August. And uh, I promise I'll let you know when I do. Biden has said he would choose a female running mate and has faced increasing pressure from the Democratic Party to choose a woman of color. Thousands of pilgrims are starting the ritual of the Muslim Hajj in Mecca today. Saudi Arabia has scaled down the annual pil pilgrimage from the 2.5 million that attended last year amid the coronavirus pandemic. Best Buy is the latest store to announce it will close on Thanksgiving Day. Comes as the pandemic changes how customers buy goods, shopping more online and less in stores. Best Buy says it plans to offer its best deals of the season earlier than ever. Well, tomorrow on GMSA at 9, August is just around the corner and the upcoming school year has been on a lot of people's minds. This week's episode of Case That Explains is all about what school will look like when classes begin this fall. The Case That Explains team is here to break down the latest episode. That's tomorrow at 9. If you missed it, we want to round out uh, the hour with another look at time saver traffic. We've got a major accident blocking at least one lane and it looks like the left shoulder. This is eastbound 410 at Crossroads. We've got traffic backing up way past Callahan. We end now with an interesting story about Red Lobster saving a blue one. <laughs> well, an incredibly <laughs> rare blue lobster was saved from certain death by Red Lobster employees. That's right. Eagle-eyed employees at the Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio Red Lobster spotted the rare crustacean and decided to contact conservationists at the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California to inform them of their discovery. The Monterey Bay Aquarium then got in touch with Akron Zoo to see if they would be interesting, interested in housing this rare animal dubbed Claude. The lobster's blue shell only happens in one out of every two million lobsters. The Akron Zoo said that the blue coloration of the shell, the result of a genetic anomaly, and estimate this rare occurrence happens one out of every two million lobsters. However, thanks to quick thinking of Red Lobster's employees, Claude's life was spared, and he now resides in the Akron Zoo, where he will live out the remainder of his days. Here's the cute part. The name Claude, it's C-L-A-W-D-E. Claude the Blue Lobster. Way to like go, that. Claude. And way to go, Red Lobster. <laughs> yeah. Right. They could have served them up with butter, but they didn't. <laughs> Everybody have a great day. We'll see you back here at noon. <laughs>